This CES coverage was brought to you by SellCashier.com. They compare iPhone prices on the internet and give you the most cash for your iPhone. It's easy, fast, and secure. Sure, how are you? This is Ed uh, from Tequarium. Uh, we're from Washington, D.C. Tequarium is a YouTube channel. Uh, we want our subscribers and our viewers to know where 5G is going, when the rollout is planned for, okay. and anything you can share that's not classified information sure. for, for all <laughs> of us here today. Okay, sounds good. First of all, thanks for coming to the Qualcomm booth. We really appreciate it. It's going to be a very exciting year for us uh, at Qualcomm. Um, the good news uh, on the 5G front most recently is that the first 5G standard was approved in late December. So we actually have a 5G specification now, so companies like Qualcomm, uh, as well as you know, cell phone companies, uh, as well as the mobile carriers, everybody else, can now begin actually building uh, real products based on a global you know, single standard for 5G. So that was completed in December. We expect the first 5G networks and 5G devices to be available in the first half of 2019. So we're about just a little bit over a year away from 5G devices um, and 5G networks you know, in people's hands. So Qualcomm was working on the processors to support the Windows 10 architecture. When is that, where is that, what stage is that on? So in terms of Windows 10 support, we actually, with our partners, um, Asus, HP, and Lenovo, we've already announced the first crop of uh, Windows 10 always connected PCs that are based on Snapdragon, uh, which means they have um, very thin and light form factors, they have incredible battery life, you know, 20 hours or more, uh, and always on connectivity with gigabit LTE, so extremely fast uh, 4G connection that works everywhere. How much more complex is the 5G rollout compared to going from 3 to 4G? It's uh, a lot more complex this time. Um, LTE itself has become very, very complex. So if you were to look at the number of different uh, bands, so frequency bands that have to be supported um, for a 4G device today, it's around 1,000 different combinations. And that number is going to grow to 10,000 different um, combinations of airwaves that a single 5G device has to support. So it's going to be immensely complex. But the good news is that we've been doing a lot of R&D for several years on 5G right now. And we are on good pace to solve these complicated problems in time for the 2019 rollouts. Sharif, thank you so much. This was Sharif with Qualcomm, specifically for Tequarium on YouTube. Thank you so Thanks much. So much.